Hey, Mark, how's it going? Oh, how you doing? Good. So today we decided to talk a little bit about assignment deals. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really too sure if everybody understands what an assignment deal is. Explain it to them. So an assignment deal is when it's mostly with new builds. You can do it on a, on a resale, but it doesn't happen often. What assignment deal is, is that the buyer sells his contract to purchase to somebody else. So say you purchase the condo and now you don't want to close it three years later. You can't get the financing. Your living condition has changed. Something's happened. Now, speculators do this as well. They buy it off the builder. Yep. And then I sell my purchase and sale agreement to you. You have to uphold everything that's in my contract. And the builder has to approve it. Everybody has to approve it. And you now become the buyer of that property. So okay. I'm buying a deal. I'm buying a property or I'm buying a deal from somebody else. Correct. Um, here's a real life experience and I want to talk about it because I know a lot about this particular client that has gone through this experience. So I'll give you a bit of background. Bought a condo. Okay. The My client was the buyer, the signee, and they were the signor. They did a, a normal APS that we typically would do. Agreement uh, of purchase and sale. To represent them. Mm-hmm. And the builder throws in about that thick of documents. Everybody see that, that thick. And most people will not go through it because one, they won't understand it. And the second part of that is that it's all geared to them. It's all in favor of the builder. So yes, they have that agreement of purchase sale with you. If you're the sign or and I'm the signee, great. We agree on these things. And Yes, the same deal in the purchase price and HST is included in this and this and great and upgrades are included, whatever that is. But there's hidden parts of that. And so what happened to my client was great. They took the documents and they said, you know, brought them to this is going back a you know a year or so ago, just closed recently. So they brought the documents to the solicitor and said, keep me out of danger. Okay, because it's the right thing to do, because they're not going to go through that. They will not understand a lot of the legal jargon. So come closing. Closing time last week, it was a big surprise. So there was $88,000 in extra. I shouldn't say that. Sorry. I'm going to add it up because I know it off by heart. So there were some colors in there that's still $5,600 in that, which colors for what? I don't know. It was just, he told me it was just builder beige kind of thing. Then it came down to, Fees for development fees. So I asked him to look into this. Now, what do you mean? And in the contract, the builder writes up that in that thick document that the lawyers should be going through. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, it was in there saying if a signer takes it over, we have the ability, meaning the developer, to basically add anything they want. So long story short, there was $46,000 in development fees that got passed on to the signee. The signor, if they would have closed on the deal, they would have only paid 12,000. So they were capped. So they're penalizing the signees versus this not applying, not really penalizing the signor. So when we talk about the same deal, yeah, it is. But the really important part that viewers should really understand is either you read that big thick document or you give it to a lawyer and you make sure that they have three or four days to go through it. And yes, they may charge you more, but I'm going to tell you, pay the money. Okay, well, and I'm going to clarify a couple things. So first of all, in the agreement of purchase and sale that the new buyer used to buy it off the original buyer. So a signee and a signor, let's make it simple that way. Right. Had a condition that it was based on lawyer approval. They already did have that, correct? Correct. So now I bought it off you, but I said, but I have it conditional on my lawyer looking at it right. because I'm not, I can't read this 300 page document. I don't even understand the legal jargon. 
And, yeah. and believe me, even as a real estate agent, those builder contracts, I get them, I get them looked at by a lawyer because I, I don't understand them. And they like, they throw in things in there. Like I don't want to be responsible for, cause I'm not like, I, I'm not a lawyer and they, they make it like Chinese. You don't even understand it. Yep. So that was already in this deal. So that deal was brought to a lawyer and that lawyer missed it in the 300 page document, correct? Correct. But I think they missed more because here's the lawyer. This is what the client told me. My client was that and they were signing that and they were going, how could this happen? How could this happen? There's a solicitor clause in there. How could this get missed? And the lawyer responded, well, you know, we don't have a lot of time. It would have cost thousands of dollars. But if that was the case, then the lawyer should have told the signee, it's going to cost you, let's just say it's 2K for me to go through this because there's extensive work in here to go through this. If I was a signee, I would say, or anybody that's going through assignment right now um, or thinking about going through and spend whatever they, they tell you the amount because there's so much hidden fees in there and, and you're at their mercy. I'm telling you right now, you cannot win. But when when you originally give that contract to a lawyer and he looks at it and says, you're okay, you assume he looked at it, correct? 100%. 110%, 100%. So that's the problem, right? So to me, the lawyer is a bit responsible, but let's, how do we protect the public? That Because, you know, we, we see these all the time, even on our, on our, on the Barry board and, and Treb board about, you know, the building going up here, you know, built in 2025 assignment sale, you know, telling you they're being bought. And I don't think people are really paying attention to them and just say, great, I got a, this property and it's, I'm going to make this up. It's 850 and that's all I pay. Well, you pay more than that because of all the hidden stuff that they're not telling you about if you're a sign or if you're sorry, if you're an assignee. And the other thing is, if you would have saw those fees, if somebody would have saw those fees in the contract, if the lawyer would have brought it to the assignee's, um, uh, what do you call it? Attention. They could have negotiated with the builder at that time. Right. They could have. Yep. Yep. You can't you can't negotiate after when you're when you're getting your statement adjustments a couple of days before to react to anything. You can't fight it. You're done. You're done. So, you know, and you're at their mercy. That's the thing, right? Like, yes, there's HST on a new build. Yes, most of 90% of these builders put it in the purchase price. So it's already worked into the price. Yes, they get a, you know, the signee would, would get a maximum credit up to $24,000 back from the Ontario government. That's the cap. It's on, you know, again, different price points, but everything's over 450 here. So bottom line, it's capped at 24 grand. So, you know, that signing will get that back from, from the terror government, you get apply for it, but has all documentation. It's not a big deal, but I can't stress enough. I, my personally, I just say, never go, never do this unless your lawyer or you're a lawyer or have some great experience on going through contracts and understanding everything about them, because you you think it's going to be an easy process and then all of a sudden you got to write a big fat check with those extra fees that you didn't count on what happens if they couldn't do that so they can't close then they're incurring more fees because now they're a breach of contract for not closing could take them a week to borrow money from mom and dad two weeks i, I really don't think you can negotiate it maybe i think you will. well i if you can't close a deal an assignment deal the original buyer has to close the deal Right. So then, then there's more, there's could be a, an open door for litigation, you, you know, where, okay, so they're going to close the deal. They're going to go after the other, the, the sign or now to close the deal. They don't really give a shit who closes as long as it gets closed and the builder gets his. Yeah. The builder doesn't care. Doesn't really care. But, you know, in this kind of a market, you know, is the valuation still there? What they bought or that? That's a big question mark. I don't know. Probably well, not. and the, the other issue is, is that if you put down a hundred thousand dollars or one hundred fifty thousand on an assignment deal, you just lose it. You're not going to get that back now. You're not getting it back. That's gone. And then what happens? Legals. If, legals, right? You're going to lose. Signing is going to lose. And then what happens if they got less? Why don't they sold it for seven fifty, and they sold it to the signee for eight? Yeah, they're or, coming after him for the fifty. Right. So there goes, so it's that assignee's in a real bad position. No now I know, what. I know Pratt 
has a clause in their builder contracts where they're not allowed assignment deals. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Because I a lot I, of a lot of builders do that. And okay. and and I know the the you you know the building down at the 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 lake house, the new build condos down there. There, I think they allowed assignments, but they weren't allowed to advertise them on realtor or list them. Correct. Correct. We're starting to see some come up there now on the board. We saw two this week. Yeah. Right. So, so they so some builders allow assignments, yep. some don't. Correct. And the other issue that you have to look at is like I feel really bad too for that person because they did put a clause in there for the lawyer to protect them and the lawyer didn't. Lawyer and and you know what the worst thing is, is that how can you even prove that he didn't tell you? I agree. The lawyer says, oh, yeah, he knew. Yeah. They knew. I, I know. How you the know. hell do you prove it? No, you don't. You don't. And, if it's, and if it's 50, 60, 70, 80,000 dollars, where are you get, like, yeah. what if you can't get it? Well, that's it. I'll tell you, you better find it. <laughs> you better, you know, extend that contract and close next week and find out where you're getting that money because boy, oh boy, you don't close. You know, and I both know what happens. <laughs> We've seen this too many times, right? Well, and you know, I have done some deals, not assignment deals, but with builders yep. where my client wanted to buy a new build and they said, well, I want Diane in there to protect me and help me. And yep. I negotiated some things like a less of a down payment and, and, um, and some uh, extra upgrades thrown in and, and stuff like that. And the, they did pay me, they did offer a flat fee to an agent to, to uh, work yeah. with them. Yeah, sure. But I still made it on based on lawyer approval. And I made the lawyer look through the contract and the client had to pay. Cause on, honestly, Mark, we deal with different though. We deal with contracts every single day. Yep. But every single builder's contract is different. That is totally different. Totally oh. different. And yep. I'm not a lawyer. And these things are like this. Yeah, they're they're very, very thick. And I'm not going to say that I know. Like, no. I hate the, you know, and I've had it with agents that have looked through documents or, or a, a status certificate on a condo. Yep. I, I don't look at that either. The lawyer does. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to go in there and try to decipher this for you and right. and put you in the wrong direction. Great. Can't. You can't. can't. No. And people out there that are buying condos and yes, there's always a condition there for status certificate and you get it. Don't, don't rely on your own, your agent or don't rely on your own expertise. You have to get the solicitor to review those, to review everything. You got reserve funds in there. You got what's going on in the building any lawsuits, any client, you name it. It's very detailed. And, you know, they're there to help you make a decision. Yes or no. Do I go with this deal or I do not go with this deal? And I know, I know in Barry, there are some with some bad status certificates. And um, yes. it, for me, I like, you know, I remember when I, when I first got my real estate license, one of the things that um, I was taught in, I had training and uh, when I was a buying agent with a team yep. and one of my training uh, things was don't, don't pretend, <laughs> pretend or take the responsibility that you're a professional and everything. I, I, I remember sitting in, in, in my office and listening to another agent giving their client the mortgage payment amount. Yeah. Oh, well, if you buy this house, your mortgage will be $1,200. And I'm thinking, okay, really? are you are you stupid? Because you realize that a mortgage rate and an interest rate that you get is based on your credit score. You don't get the lowest amount right off the top. If your credit is anywhere shaky or yeah. they don't like anything, your, your interest rate's higher. Yeah, there's more risk. Yeah. So I don't know what your interest rate's going to be. So no. I never, ever tell people, oh, this is your mortgage payment. No. Call your mortgage guy. Call your mortgage guy. He's the professional in that field. That's right. There's a contract that needs to be reviewed. Review we send him. it to your lawyer. Because yep. I'm not a lawyer. No, no, but when it comes to buying houses and yep. doing purchase and sale agreements 
and and home inspections, I'm your girl, right? That's what we're there for. So we do. That's what we do for a living, right? And we've got the experience to make those decisions and help them guide people. But I'm not wearing I'm wearing one hat. It's called the real estate white hat. I'm not wearing any other white hats. No. I'm wearing an environmental hat. I'm not wearing an accounting hat. I'm not wearing a, a landlord tenant act hat, whatever that we get faced with. And we all have experience in that. We can give some, you know, advice, but I don't say take this as the written rule. You need to get, you need to hear from an expert. It safeguards us as agents too. And it's well, for sure. Right. That they're getting the best information to make decisions. And that's what it's about. Well, what if we, what if we read something and we interpret it a certain way and we're wrong? I, I 100%. And your client's screwed. 100%. If I got a contract from, from someone to on our paperwork, we could we could decipher, we could understand it. And if we couldn't, we we would get help on it. We but it's rare that we need the help, less something's no. really in there. But yeah. I was really disappointed by that that solicitor that let the client down. Cuz they don't really give a shit at the end of the day. And that's wrong. When I drop off on a, a document or say, hey, here's solicitor approval, there's there's for a reason. It's not just for me to something to do. And I remember can you over the years always put a solicitor clause in there, pass the liability on to them, not you. You just shift it from you to them. Well, because Mark, in a lot of things, right. we're not we're not professional in builder contracts. And huh. I've seen enough of them to know that they're all different. And I and honestly. They're all geared everywhere you look on behalf of the builder, right? Builder wins. Builder wins. And there is and there is places where you could negotiate if you knew what the hell you were reading. Damn right. Damn right. Yep. That's the thing, right? So for the general public, be, be aware of assignment sales. Be aware of assignment sales. That's the, that's the best way to, to say it. Be aware, right? Because the deal can change any goddamn time they want it to change. Oh, and how and that property or that deal that you were talking about, how many times did they change the closing date? Three? Yeah, three. They're allowed to allowed three. But yeah. let's go back to let's I have another story which involved myself. I bought a property in in Mount Trauma, Quebec in October of 2020. And it was a, it was a new brand new build. It's called Verbeer Trombla. Called the agent. My brother bought one down there, a resale property through the agent. So I called her. What do you got available? Nothing. But I have a new project that's coming up, and there's like one or two left. Send me the details. Yeah, I like it. I think it was six hundred nine thousand. We'll call it six. I think. Gave a fifty thousand dollar deposit. You know, signed the contract the whole bit. You know, watch it kind of get, you know, built up over the two years. We'll say, and then in May. 2022 i get a phone call from they call down there they're uh not lawyers but um oh geez it was on the tip of my tongue like anyway, a paralegal no well they're lawyers but they're just called a different name we're going to call lawyers because i just pulled ahead a blank they called me up said we'd like to have a phone call with you on this date can you make yourself available sure so i think i was at the office at the time so i go to the office and you know, hop on the call. I think you were in my office. I was. I was and <laughs> all of a sudden, you know what? Um, sorry to let you know, but you know what? We're going to raise the prices by $107,000. So the new purchase price is seven oh seven. dollars um, Do you still want it? What? <laughs> no, I don't want it. No, I'm not paying that. That was a shaky time in the market. Mm -hmm. That was shaky. That's uncertainty, man. Forget it. No, thanks. No, no problem. Um, give me my 50,000. This is, well, there's a two week cooling down period to give you, I don't even know what goddamn time. <laughs> Just give me the check. I'm going to hit decline. Thanks. There you go. It's done. Send the check purely the check to me, please. And thank you. Five days later, I got a check. But there's a prime example. You think you just bought a property. They should have done that in 2021 when the market was on fire not May 2022. Yeah. After March, April, we saw things slide down, right? Well, yeah. And in 2021, you might have said, okay. I might have. I might have, right. But I said, no way. There's too much risk there for me, thanks. So there's another prime example that you think you're buying something. And we've seen this a lot. 
in 20, over the last few years in the hot market where the builder says, sorry, we're raising the prices. We've seen it here in, in, the, in our community in Barrie. We've mm -hmm. seen it in North York, Toronto. We've seen it all over the news. People are, thought they bought a home and sorry, here's your deposit back. It's 300 grand more, too bad. That's what happens with the builders. So it's all one-sided. And well, it, it is. And, you know, a lot of people think that buying new builds is such a great deal and stuff. But, you know, um, I had a client call me from actually our, the YouTube um, videos we do. And he bought um, an end unit semi, yeah. brand new, yeah. two years ago, I think. And it's yeah. finished now for over 900 Yeah, he wouldn't get that today. Did he move into it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he had to close for sure. He I closed mean, and he he's living there now. But I mean, the values drop like shit. And he knows he's overpaying. He's like, I got ripped off. So, like when you buy a new build, you have no guarantee what by the time it's built that the value is gonna even be there. So most times it's okay. For most times. But look what we went through in the run up of the COVID times. COVID threw a wrench in things. I remember. Well, you know what? Do you do you remember when the market went to hell? I think it was in 2017. Country mm -hmm. homes in Innisfil stopped building for two years. Yeah. Their semi, their townhouses they were building were selling, reselling the ones that the first phase were reselling for a hundred thousand less than mm -hmm. what the new people had bought for. So they just stopped building. They just put it off. Sorry. And we've seen a lot of that in the last two years here too. Yeah. This isn't the market to build. Valuations aren't there. Cost of materials and labor has gone through the roof. Can't get it done in time. Can't guarantee much. We're out. Right. Thing well, the, pro the problem is all the deals, all the houses they had sold, they knew the people weren't going to be able to close. Yeah. 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 They started having one or two problems because yeah. the appraisers aren't coming in. Because the same house is selling for a hundred thousand less. Okay. Yeah. So they were like, okay, we got to put this on hold because no one's going to be able to close. percent. And I'm sure there's lots of people too with these rate increases over last year. Couldn't close on, on projects. Lots. Lots. Well, I think that was a good um, information for people. Read the contract. Be careful. Make sure your lawyer reads it. And make, make sure you actually say, are there any hidden fees anywhere? Take the conversation. I'm, I'm being serious. Take the conversation on your phone. Or, or you know what? Do it all through email. So you have a, you have a record yep. of, could you please tell me exactly what the fees are going to be? Yep. Ask them some trick questions that they, so you know, they've gone through it. Any fees in development charges, any unexpected fees in that way, can they increase the price at any time? Can they put it what off? What happens with the HST? Was it right. included in the price? Right. These Who's are all responsible. Right. They're all valuable, valuable questions. That will get the lawyer's attention very quick. And if you don't get the answers, then you know they would look at it. Yeah. And talking to them over the phone doesn't help you because you can't prove shit. Can't prove shit. All in writing. Or do yeah. it on a record it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Have a good night. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.